Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode we are talking about new arrivals from Arrow Video. We've got a trio of bangers here. We've got Sonny Chiba in the Executioner Collection. This is Executioner 1 and Executioner 2, Karate Inferno. We have an Angela Mal double feature, uh, Lady Whirlwind and Hapkido. And we have uh, the Dunwich Horror, H.P. Lovecraft, late 60s adaptation, uh, super psychedelic. Dean Stockwell is one of the leads. If you like Quantum Leap, you know Dean Stockwell, like such a, not what you expect from Dean Stockwell. This has one of my favorite special features in recent memory on it. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, before I go any further, please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. you got to subscribe so you never miss anything. Ring that little bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. Uh, and you know, sometimes people say, Heath, why haven't you talked about so-and-so? And I say, I did. Uh, or Heath, I've got a video idea for you. And I say, I already made that video. Subscribe so you never miss anything. It also supports the channel, helps other people to find it, gets us into that mysterious, almighty YouTube algorithm, which can make or break a channel like this one. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I talked about Patreon too. Patreon support is very important. Uh, we have over, I think it's about 140 exclusive episodes just for Patreon. Uh, so I do appreciate it if you can help us out that way. Let's talk about these movies. I've should we start with Sonny Chiba? It seems like the natural place to start. Sonny Chiba, The Executioner Collection. If you only know Sonny Chiba from the Street Fighter movies or even from Kill Bill, right? This is a different Sonny Chiba. This is funny Sonny Chiba, like wacky, this broad comedy in here, guys. This is like farts and poops and all. It's like really, really broad comedy. It's like, like martial arts meets the Farrelly brothers or something like that. Um, so... I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. I don't want to do these in-depth reviews. They're essentially, they are martial arts movies, but I feel like the director, well, actually I learned via the special features here that the director wasn't super interested in making straight ahead martial arts movies. So they're kind of, they're kind of comedies. They're kind of like three stooges movies is really what they are. And uh, there's two films, Executioner 1 and then Karate Inferno. Karate Inferno has about five minutes of action in it. And the, the biggest <laughs> the biggest action scene is at the end of the movie. But we still get the Sonny Chiba we want. He hits people so hard that their eyes pop out of their head. It's really fun, silly stuff. Um, so if you are, you know, if you watch kung fu movies and you're like, this needs more, this needs more scatological humor. This needs more Three Stooges jokes. Uh, these are the movies for you. We've got a reversible poster here with the, the new collection artwork and the original Executioner poster. That's my, I like that. You know, I'm a vintage kind of guy. As you know, I got to go with the new artwork on that. But I, the new, the, uh, the old artwork, but the new artwork is cool. Uh, we've got a booklet here as well with an essay inside called... It's called uh, Making Martial Arts Funny. Sonny Chiba and company deliver laughs together with hardcore action in the two Executioner films. And it explains how they have melded these two, uh, you know, kung fu and comedy together. This disc, it is one disc, is loaded with some really good special features. There's that reversible artwork. We've got a commentary. And uh, the, the coolest thing here probably for a lot of you guys, for me, because I learned more here than I was expecting to, is a 30-minute featurette on, uh, it's called Sonny Chiba Karate King. And it's looking at Sonny Chiba, the legacy, kind of an overview of his career. And I am not an expert on Sonny Chiba. I know the movies that, you know, I've done a video about the Street Fighter movies. I've got, I've probably got 15 to 20 Sonny Chiba movies in my collection. I and mean, maybe more than that. But I don't know him like these guys know him. So they're talking to... Uh, Grady Hendrix, Tom Mez, Chris Poggiali, Marco Joaquim, and Sejo Ano from the, uh, the band Guitar Wolf. They really know Sonny Chiba stuff. And so this was very educational for me. Uh, original trailers, image galleries, they're in their Japanese. Uh, mono audio with uh, English subtitles. And there's a, an English mono audio track for the first for the Executioner. Reversible sleeve. All right, so that's the Executioner collection. I want to talk about... This Angela Mal double feature. These are great. These are Golden Harvest martial arts movies uh, from the early 70s. I think they're both 71. I'm looking for the years on here. They're both, I don't see them. Uh, it just has the 2010 copyright from Fortune Star who picked up the Golden Harvest catalog. Oh, here we go, 1972. Um, they're both 1972. So uh, it's two movies, Lady Whirlwind and... Uh, La um, 
Originally released in the U.S. as Deep Thrust and Lady Kung Fu, these two restored martial arts classics show Mao at her mightiest. Um, they're great movies. They're you know we're talking about an era of very bloody, you know, very bloody martial arts movies. There was only a, a very short heyday of the martial arts movie. We're getting all this stuff from era. You know, we're getting all these Shaw Scope movies. So this is kind of the competition. Um, but it's great. I mean, these movies are really, really great. As I was watching these, it reminded me again how close the martial arts movie is to a spaghetti western, specifically a spaghetti, an Italian western, not a not an American western. Um, they are stylish and iconic and minimal on plot, but long on imagery and on you know like shot composition. These action scenes just go on and on. There's one action scene at the beginning of Lady Whirlwind. It starts in this building. I was like, all right, all right, I'm enjoying it. And then like it goes through the window and it goes out into the street and it continues down the street. Like they just go on. It, it, it's it's amazing the choreography and just like the uh, the way the way you can make a 90 minute movie out of a very thin plot. Lady Whirlwind, I'll say this is a really interesting idea because it's about someone coming to get revenge on someone. And then finding that that person they're trying to get revenge on is themselves in the process of trying to get revenge on someone. It's like, wait your turn for revenge. But it's really good. And uh, there's a, a lot of stuff here. We've got, first of all, uh, as you expect with, with Arrow and these kind of films, we've got different artwork here. So there's the reversible cover stuff. Two discs, two movies, two discs. Uh, probably to make room for all these special features. So we've got, well here, you can read some of this for yourself while I read some of it to you. So we've got um, Frank th th three commentaries on, uh, let's see, Disc 1, Lady World 1, commentary by Frank Jang and Robert Bobby Samuels, commentary by Frank Jang. That's two. Three commentaries on Lady World 1. The first part of a new interview with Angela Mel, uh, and a, an interview with her son who owns a restaurant, uh, which is really, he talks about growing up with his, you know, my mom, the Kung Fu star. And then have Keto has... Let's see, one commentary, two commentary tracks. Lady Kung Fu Speaks, the second part of the Angela Mao interview. Uh, she talks about Sammo Hung, who was the, he's one of the, I think he's the fight choreographer on at least one of these. Uh, look at this, guys, the original vintage featurette. Um, it, it's, it's, like, this is, I talk about martial arts. This is a genre I'm discovering. Like, I've always known your Bruce Lee's and Sonny Chiba Street Fighter. I've, I've been a Sonny Chiba fan since the 90s. But right now, with everything that's happening with physical media, all these kung fu movies are making their way over to, like, the, um, the Western market, right? Like, the, the UK, the US. And we're getting things that we've never had before in beautiful restorations. Like, I want to make a bold statement here, but I'm going to stand by it. These movies look better on physical media, on Blu-ray, than they looked in the theater. They are pristine. Because, you know, kung fu movies, well, any movie, really, as soon as you show it once, it starts to get dirty. These movies are grindhouse movies, right? So they're going to get shown over and over and over. They're going to be dirty. They're going to have all these, you know, smudges and maybe splices and stuff. These movies look so pristine. And it really reminds you that they're not a joke. They're just really good movies. You know, that's a tendency with so many of these bad dubs. Like, ho, oh, I see you there. I will fight you. You will die beneath my foot. We like they become a joke, but when you watch them in their original language in the widescreen image with great quality, oh man, they're powerful. They're really, really great movies. So I've had a, a real blast discovering some of this stuff for the first time. Uh, the Dunwich Horror. Man, it's hard to adapt HP Lovecraft for the screen. Goodness knows people have tried over and over and over again. I don't know that it's ever been like successfully nailed. I don't think anybody's ever done a home run on an HP Lovecraft property. Some of you guys are like, well, what about, and then insert movie here. I don't think HP Lovecraft, he's made for the page, right? It's, it lives on the page. When you adapt it, it loses something, but the Dunwich Horror does a lot of things that I like. It's a sort of a, this is 1969. Yeah. It's a study in atmosphere and it's that, it's like a statement on hippies and there's this LSD, like acid imagery. Uh, essentially, they marketed this as a as American International, uh, who I love, AIP, adapt. They, they marketed this as a sort of like a, a cult movie, like a satanic cult movie, but that's not what it is. Um, it's 
it's Lovecraft. It's like the, the elder gods are out there. There's another dimension to another world. That's what Lovecraft does. Hard to capture that in a B-movie. Or, you know, yeah, it's probably... This has had more resources than some of the B-movies we talk about. But it's still, you know, it's, it's a limited thing. Dean Stockwell is great. He gives this really subdued, uh, quiet performance that I is kind of unlike what I know him for. That was great. Sandra D. This is the interesting thing about the Dunwich Horror to me. Sandra D. is Gidget, uh, the surfer. Like I love Gidget. Um, Sandra D. is like the poster girl for the late fifties, early sixties, ponytailed blonde girl next door. But here, you know, it's like ten years later, and they want to make her sexy. So enter her appearance in the Dunwich Horror, where she's trying to be, um, you know, Sandra D. the adult actress, and it doesn't entirely work. But I admire her for trying. You know, a, a lot of people, when I started talking about this on social media, a lot of people are like, well, you know, it's not great. No, I don't think it is great, but it's interesting. I, I, I say this sometimes, whether a movie is good or it's bad, I'm less interested in that and more interested in how it does what it does. I'm interested in the visuals, the shot compositions, the actors, the performances, uh, whether it all works. I mean, most movies don't, they're not great. Most movies aren't great. How many movies are truly great? Like 0.05%. Very few movies are great. Some of them are good. Some of them are watchable. Some of them are entertaining in their own ways. I am sort of a, 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 a an explorer, like an archaeologist of, of just vibes and ideas and imagery. And there's a lot of really cool things in the Dunwich Horror. But this is loaded with some really great special features. Uh, here, I'm going to let you read this while I talk to you. So it's a new 2K presentation. Again, Dunwich Horror has never looked this good before. Uh, original lossless mono audio. So uh, new audio commentary by Guy Adams and Alexandra Benedict, creators of the audio drama Arkham County. Arkham from Batman comes from H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, the Door into Dunwich. This is the one, guys. A new conversation between film historian Stephen R. Bissett uh, and horror author Stephen Laws in which they discuss the Dunwich horror, Lovecraft, and their memories of seeing the film on release. So Stephen Bissett is uh, not to belittle, not to... He's, like, so many people know him as the artist from Swamp Thing, with, like, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. Stephen Bissett was the artist on that, but he's so much more than that. He's a, he's a professor, an instructor, a pop culture historian. Um, but that's, I think, most people will know him as, like, oh, the Swamp Thing guy. This is two hours and ten minutes of these two guys talking on Zoom. I assume it was Zoom. It might have been Skype. Uh, just talking about growing up watching stuff in the 60s and into the 70s, and it is fascinating to me. I want to see more stuff like this. Uh, I was recently talking about some other releases and they're like the video essay thing continues to be a thing. I just want to see guys who know what they're talking about geeking out while I watch. We get a lot of that on YouTube, uh, but it's rare that I see two people of such authority as uh, the two Stevens talking to each other. We've got um, a new interview with uh, fantasy writer Ruthanna em Emrys. Uh, we've got The Sound of Cosmic Terror. There's a new interview with the music historian. Oh, I should even... Les Baxter did the music for this. Hey, Les Baxter is amazing for his uh, Exotica work. Did a lot of film comp composition. If you like... We talk about the Horror Express sometimes. If you like the music from the Horror Express, uh, the Peter Cushing, uh, Christopher Lee, uh, Euro horror movie, listen to the theme from The Dunwich Horror by Les Baxter. They are wise enough to use that for the menu music here you know the menus have like a, a montage and there's music and like whoosh, sucks you in it's great stuff that's right up right up my alley and a lot of your guys too uh let's see um theatrical trailer image gallery reversible sleeve you've seen the reversible artwork that's what the that's the alternate artwork here uh we've got another booklet hey the the debate continues i asked this in a recent video do you prefer booklets or video essays so far, booklets are winning. Not a lot of love for video essays. Some people have voted for video essays, but by and large, um, we're getting a lot of stuff. A lot of people are like, booklets mean they went the extra mile. I, I, I think YouTube kind of has spoiled people, spoiled people on the video essay because there's so many of them on YouTube, but this feels, you, you have it. It feels, you know, it's a tangible thing. There's some pictures in here that I can show you of uh, Sandra D. Though she did have a, a body double for the more, the more risque stuff, but I believe this is Sandra D. 
on the uh, the sacrificial altar. And um, I get what she was trying to do. Here's another one. This is Sandra Dean, Dean Stockwell. It's a really interesting movie. I, again, it, I don't think it all works, but that's okay. It doesn't all have to work. It's an interesting enough package that I think this... Actually, all three of these are uh, really welcome additions to, to my shelf, to my collection. You know if they're for you. And uh, I don't know, Era's doing some good stuff. We're kicking off 2023 with a big shaboom. Uh, guys, let's continue the conversation in the comments below. I, and you know what? I'll put links to where you can pick this stuff up too. Uh, if you use an affiliate link that I share in the description of this video, you are supporting Serial at Midnight. We get like 3% off of the sale. Uh, that supports the channel too. So any way you can help us out, please do it. I, I appreciate you so much. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Uh, take care. Let's, again, let's talk about these movies. I'm going to say this. I'm going to try to say this at the end of every video. Let us not let the collecting of movies take over the conversation of the movies themselves. Let's not put collecting in front of just movie love. Uh, yes, I am so glad that I have these. Mm, they smell good. They look good. But you know what? I want to watch them. And I did watch them. And I got to talk to you about them. And you got to see what a difference that makes, right? So let's continue that conversation in the comments below. Guys, thanks so much. Take care. Till next time, I will catch you later.